The moment of truth. We're gonna weigh the bike. What yeah. do you think? Tain, what do you How much? 7.1. 7.3. What do you think? Oh, it feels light. Okay, so I say seven. Uh... <laughs> oh! I hope I didn't forget any parts, but well, we're in a bike shop. So guys has everything we need anyway. Dude, I'm super excited again. We're gonna build a new bike. It's a different bike than last time. We're not building a gravel bike. We're building a lightweight climbing road bike, bike. Yeah. a road bike, and it's a DI2 bike. Is this gonna be very different? For me, not. No? No. Just the same story. So this is the SLC 2.0 frame from, from Windspace. It's their climbing, climbing bike. It's the lightest version they have without paint. Only has a little bit of paint. We weighed it, it's 940 grams, grams yes. in size uh, uh, large. Let's rock and roll. Yes. For the parts, I bought a complete Jira Ace 9100 uh, disc brake group set. Carbon handlebar from Beta. I've got the stem in two different sizes. A very lightweight saddle, which I, uh, which I like. Rotors, all this DI2 junk, which I don't have any clue of. Chain, bottom bracket, tires, fork, seat post. That's it. Well, there's one thing different, uh, because you start with the battery, and last time we didn't even have a battery. Nope. So the DI2, I have, I have no idea the I2. I literally had to find out last year at Hot Route during the race how to adjust my shifter. I was like on Google, find out how to adjust the shifter. And then while I was racing, I was kind of trying to figure it out. Uh, but I'm sure that uh, after today, this device is going to be shifting how it should be and uh, it's not going to be a problem. When you buy a frame at Windspace, you get a box full with all the extra little things that you need, like the frame stickers against scratches, two derailleur pads, the headset bearings, the stem spacers, the axles, the fork top clamp, and some clips to close off those routing, cable routing holes. If you're interested in buying anything from Windspace, check out my discount code in the description below for 10% off anything from their website. So the uh, Windspace frames come with the uh, internal lining already in place. So it goes through here and then you can even see it in the uh, bottom bracket. They are right there and then the end there and at the back for the rear derailleur. But that's for cables and we have electronic wires. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna take these out and then you will see nothing of that because everything will be internal. Guys is already putting in the hydraulic lines for the rear brake and then hopefully it comes out at the top here. Okay. For the brake hoses and shift cables, there is internal guidance in place already that makes it super easy to wire everything. However, we were going to route everything through the headset, the stem and the handlebar. So we had to make a small adjustment. A small incision in the cable guide made it possible for the brake hose to continue inside the frame to the top of the headset. The hole in the bottom tube where normally the brake hose entered the frame is unused in this case. I did fill that up later with some grey kit. The standard bolts that come with the brake calipers from Shimano were way too long to fit this frame. So we had to use these additional spacers to make it fit. Shorter bolts would also be an option if you have them. So. Yes. The wheels we are using are the very brand new, unreleased Windspace 
Hyper version two wheels. I've got the low profile, 38 millimeters. It's got the new designed hub, same carbon spokes. It's gonna be light and fast. Internal uh, diameter is wider than the old wheels. So we're gonna see how the tires will fit on there. Alles wel in één keer doorheen. Weet jij af uh, hoeveel je erin doet? Weet je dat? Ja, meestal gewoon. Eén of twee pompen doen wij erin. Oké. Okay. Werkt meer dan, meer dan genoeg. Nou ja. Oké. Okay. Even mee lopen naar achter. Wat? Bam! <laughs> hey. <laughs> Special trick. <laughs> Ik moet met 40 Nm. Ja. In mijn hand gebouwd. Top. One thing with all these internal cables that's way more difficult than when you're not doing the internal cables is the bike fit because you can't change it very easily once you have it all put together. So we've, you know, we spent some time measuring up and I took measurements from my old bike just to be sure that we're not too far off. So right now it seems like I'm really, really close to my uh, Super 6 from last year and uh, it looks like a really cool bike already. Much, much, much later.
gaat carbon. Uh, ja. As Gijs is wrapping the bar tape, we're almost wrapping up building this bike. In the previous build video from the gravel bike, there's always people commenting about the bar tape. Wrapped the wrong way or whatever. Everybody has his own opinion. I've never had any issues with bar tape. Reversed, wrapped or wrapped the other direction. So the way he wraps it, it looks super clean. So I'm all happy with that. If you want to complain about the wrapping direction of the bar tape, go ahead. I don't care. Done. Done. The moment of truth. We're gonna weigh the bike with power meter pedals, huh? No bottle cages. Okay. Yeah. And no Garmin. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh! hey, yeah, but it's a pretty good uh, score, I think. Seven. Zero, seven. seven. Cool. Hey, another bike. Another one. Another bike built at handmade in Wees. It took a little bit more time than the gravel bike. I think that the whole DI2 thing makes it maybe a little bit more complicated or... Well, it wasn't about the DI2, I think. More like the inter integration of the stem and the handlebar. It oh, yeah. took some more time. Yeah. It's kind of a puzzle, eh? Sort it of. is, a little. And also we spent some time to, to make sure the fit was okay. Because yeah. we were doubting if we were going to use a longer stem or not. Very important to do that before you complete the bike, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. How much extra work is it when somebody comes into your shop and says, oh, I just want to uh, take out the spacer. And they have a, a headset like this. Yeah, sometimes an hour or sometimes two hours. So, yeah. yeah. And normally it was like five minutes maybe. Yeah, it was. Everybody wants to have internal cable routing, but it makes life so much more complicated. So think about it before you want to build a bike like that. Seven kilos in a little bit. I'm happy with that. I'm going to ride this bike on Haute Route. One more thing is the money. On the G2 gravel bike, people were asking me how much was the bike. Completely Dura Ace DI2. Carbon wheels. Carbon wheels, carbon spokes, carbon frame, carbon handlebars. Saddle. Everything. We made a, a rough estimate, but I'll, I'll uh, sum it up here in the screen. We think it's about five and a half thousand yeah, euros. If you buy a Western brand, you're gonna at least pay double. At least. At least. If the quality is the same, I'm gonna find out in the Pyrenees. I'll do a review on this bike after I've ridden it for a bit. That's it for now, guys. Make sure you check out the rest of my videos. Subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss Haute Route in the Pyrenees. See ya!